Okay. Okay. This is this is a new model uh, for why we get autoantibodies, the DNA and RNA, and it puts together a few uh, things that are already been known. But the point is what we have found is that type 1 interferon is critical to promote survival at the T2 checkpoint, you know, the transitional stage 2, but it's also called the checkpoint 2. And uh, that's an early stage of development of B cells. And then <clears throat> how does that work? Well, we knew for a long time that one thing type 1 interferon does on B cells, and now we showed it even on T2 specifically, Jane showed it, on T2 specifically, is it... Uh, well, T2 and some of the transitional stages, but they're very sensitive to this. They, and MZPs, marginal zone precursors, which show might be a transitional stage. So that stage of B cells, we already showed one thing with type 1 interferon upregulates uh, CD86, which is a co signatory molecule for class 2 processed antigens. And it upregulates CD69, which causes the B cells to leave the marginal zone and go into the follicle. So between Upregulating the uh, co signatory molecules and maybe class 2 and bringing them into the follicle, they're in a position to stimulate the T cells. And so they could make an immune response, the T cell immune response, the T cell might make IL 21, and then the B cell can go on and make autoantibodies or antibodies to this signal. But you have to remember the other component of this um, is the immunoglobulin receptor. And what, what kinds of things stimulate interferon? Now you gotta go from here to thinking, well, what's the immune system for? It's not to make autoimmunity, it's, it's so we can uh, protect ourselves from um, pathogens, and antibodies are really good at protecting ourselves from viral pathogens. So viruses, so here's a virus coming into this B cell through this IgM receptor, say in a transitional B cell. The virus gets processed in this endosome, you know, so this, there's this little endosome. And you get RNA and DNA and RNPs. But here's a critical thing. Now, we have to be sensitive to this. The B cell has to, be, has to recognize these and become activated in response to this. And we know from our data that in BD2 mice, and other people have shown autoimmunity, that another thing interferon, interferon signaling does is upregulate interferon response genes. And what are these? Other than CD86 and CD69, they're DNA and RNA sensing molecules, like in the uh, uh, MD5A, over here, MD5A, and interferon-induced uh, 202B, those sorts of genes that cause increased responses to uh, DNA and RNA in, in these uh, endosomes. So if, that, if they have increased responses of these, then they can uh, signal, and we have to figure out what that signal is, but maybe in any event you get increased signaling, and then the antigens become available to be processed through class two, and, and then you get a nice virus response. Now, here's the interesting thing. The interesting sort of concept is, when we took a BXD2 mouse, and we uh, yeah, BXD2 mouse, and we depleted their B cells and watched them repopulate, um, preliminary data, the repopulation doesn't get past the T2 stage. So by blocking interferon, you actually block selection of B cells. So what this might mean is, and that's a normal, we don't have a virus infection all the time. So even normally, we cannot get past the T2 stage very easily unless we have type 1 interferon. So there's, what about the other end? There's two possibilities. One is the B cells could be selecting on viruses and, uh, viruses and DNA containing substances, or it could be selecting on a lot of other substances. But type 1 interferon signaling will probably promote just this component. And the fact that not having type 1 interferon prevents the, uh, or greatly impairs the B cells from going past the T2 stage might mean that one of the major antigens that humans and mice select on at the T2 stage are viral-like antigens, which in our case, we don't have viruses, but we do have apatitic cells, CPG, DNA, and RNA. So, the sort of the uh, overall concept is we have an entire immune repertoire highly geared towards DNA and RNA and highly capable of making um, uh, antibodies to our DNA and RNP and, and Rho and La and those kinds of things, the same kinds of things you see in lupus. And so that's why 
since we're geared towards that, because we want to be geared towards attacking and making the virus, that's why this pathway, the you know endogenous DNA and RNA sensing pathway, in the study of that and the, and the regulation of that, now it should be the focal point. We, can, however, as an easy shortcut to understanding this and regulating this, one can just block interfere. That blocks all of this. So we think interferon is a, is, has a lot of uh, benefits for treatment and but more precise treatment and understanding more precise defects, which of course some have been identified, you know, the MDA5 defects have all been identified in lupus and, and uh, just now the goal might be to be more specific and understand ways to, to block them. Uh, 